In this video, we're going to focus on solving problems associated with electric charge. So let's start with this one. If 4,500 electrons were transferred to a neutral metal rod, what would be the electric charge of the metal rod? So let's draw a picture. Let's say this is the metal rod. Originally, it's neutral, so its initial charge is zero. But then we're going to have 4,500 electrons that's going to be transferred to this metal rod. So once that happens, it's going to acquire a negative charge. We need to calculate what that new charge is going to be. Now, what you need to know is that one electron has a charge of negative 1.602 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. Now, we could use this as our conversion factor. So let's start with what we're given, which is 4,500 electrons. And let's convert it to charge. So one electron, we're going to put that on the bottom. We can equate that to this quantity of charge. So we set it up in such a way that the unit electrons will cancel. And so we're going to multiply the two numbers. So you should get negative 7.2 times 10 to the negative 16 coulombs. So that's going to be the new electric charge of this metal rod. Now let's move on to the second problem. What is the electric charge of 3.6 moles of electrons? So what we're going to do in this problem, by the way, feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem yourself. This is going to be a double conversion problem. We're going to convert moles of electrons to number of electrons. And then once we have the number of electrons, we can convert that to electric charge in coulombs. Now we know that one electron has a charge of negative 1.602 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. So we're going to use that in the second part of the problem. Now, another conversion factor that you need to know for this problem is Avogadro's number. And that is one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So if you have one mole of atoms, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. If you have one mole of calculators, that's 6 times 10 to the 23 calculators. So if we have one mole electrons, that's going to be that number of electrons. So let's start with what we're given, which is 3.6 moles of electrons. And let's convert that to the number of electrons using Avogadro's number. So we're going to put moles of electrons on the bottom. So we could cancel those two units. And the other part of the conversion factor is going to go on top of this fraction. So now we could use this conversion factor to convert from a number of electrons to coulombs. So since we have electrons here, we're going to put this on the bottom of the third fraction. And this is going to go on top of the third fraction. Now those units cancel and we simply need to multiply by the numbers on top. So it's 3.6 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 times a negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19. So you should get negative 347,300.784 coulombs. Now we can round that and convert it to kilocoulombs by dividing it by 1,000. So this is approximately negative 347 kilo coulombs. So that is the total electric charge of 3.6 moles of electrons. Now what about this problem? What is the total electric charge of 50 kilograms of protons? That's a lot of protons. 
But how would you calculate the electric charge if you're given the mass instead of the number of moles? Well, we could use a conversion process. First, we know that the charge on one proton is positive instead of negative, but positive 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now, the second thing that we need to know is the mass of an individual proton. And you can look this up in your physics textbook. One proton has a mass of 1.6726 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So with this information and these two conversion factors, we can convert from 50 kilograms to the electric charge in coulombs. So let's start with what we're given. We have 50 kilograms of protons. We'll use P for protons. Now let's use this to convert from kilograms to protons. So since we have kilograms on top, we're going to put kilograms on the bottom. So 1.6726 times 10 to negative 27 kilograms of protons. Well, that's just the mass of one proton, so there's really no point in putting that. We can just leave it like this and put one proton on top. So one proton has this mass in kilograms. Now we can cross out the unit kilograms. Now all we need to do at this point is use this conversion factor to convert protons into electric charge. And we know one proton has a charge of 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So we can cross out the unit protons. So we're going to multiply by the numbers on top and divide by the numbers on the bottom. So it's 50 times 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs divided by 1.6726 times 10 to the negative 27. So you should get 4.789, and this is approximately, it's a rounded answer, times 10 to the 9. Let's make sure I have the right number of decimal places. And this is Coulomb's. So we could say that's approximately 4.8 giga Coulomb's. Giga is 10 to the 9. So that is the total electric charge of 50 kilograms of protons. It's pretty high. Now this problem is a lot more involved than the other three problems that we've considered. And for those of you who want more difficult problems on electric charge, check out my video on Coulomb's Law. I have a free version on YouTube which is about 35 minutes long, close to 36 minutes. But the full version, which is an hour and 40 minutes long, you could find that on my Patreon page or in my YouTube membership program. So I'm going to post a few links in the description section below for those of you who might be interested. Now for those of you who want to sign up for my Patreon membership program, you can access it at patreon.com slash math science tutor. Now if you click on this link, physics, it'll give you all my physics videos, but I do have other videos on calculus, organic chemistry, general chemistry, pre-cal, and more as well. But clicking on physics, you'll see all my physics topics. So these are where you could find the full length version of my YouTube videos. What you see on YouTube, those are the free versions. So some of these videos on YouTube might be 30 minutes long, but the full version might be an hour, it might be two hours long. And it contains worksheets as well. But we're going to scroll all the way down until we get to Coulomb's Law. So here it is. So this is the full video. As you can see, it's about an hour and 40 minutes long. And here you have the worksheet, which contains a printout of all the problems in the full extended video since some of you have been requesting that. But in this video, you're going to find more problems on electric charge, particularly the harder ones. Now, you can also access this video on my YouTube membership program. 
But for those of you who want the worksheet, I only currently have it on my Patreon membership program. Now I do have some other Physics 2 videos here. Electric fields, as you can see from this picture. A lot of hard problems here. Electric potential, electric potential energy, and even on capacitors as well. So feel free to take a look at this when you get a chance. I'm going to post some links in the description section below this video so you it'll take you it'll take you directly to this page. But now let's get back to this problem. A metal sphere with a charge of positive 20 microcoulombs is placed in contact with an identical metal sphere carrying a charge of positive 4 microcoulombs. What will be the new charge of each sphere after equilibrium is established? So let's draw a picture. So we have two metal spheres, we'll call this, we'll say this is number one and this is number two. They both carry a positive charge. The first sphere has a charge of 20 microcoulombs. The second one has a charge of four microcoulombs. And then the two spheres will be placed in contact with each other. So after they've been in contact for some significant time, what's going to be the new charge on each sphere? Now we're dealing with identical spheres, so the charges will be the same since each sphere has the same surface area. If we want to calculate the new equilibrium charge where they're the same, all we need to do is average the two numbers. So we're going to add up 20 and 4 and then we'll divide it by 2. So this gives us 24 divided by 2, which is 12. So charge 1 is going to be 12 microcoulombs. Charge 2, I mean, this metal sphere 2 will also be 12 microcoulombs. Now part B, what type of electric particles were transferred? Would you say protons or electrons? Well, you need to be familiar with the structure of an atom. But more specifically, the atoms in a metal. So the atoms in a metal, the nucleus contains the protons. Outside of the protons, you have the orbitals where you'll find the electrons. Now the protons, they're stuck in the nucleus, they don't move. But in a metal, the electrons, they're free to move. So when you're dealing with electricity, it is the electrons that are moving through the metallic wires. That's why metals conduct electricity. It's because these charge carriers, these electrons, they're free to move in a, in a metal, particularly the valence electrons. The core electrons, they're stuck in the atom but the outermost valence electrons, they're free to move in a metal. So when electric charge is transferred from one metal sphere to another metal sphere, you need to know that it is not the protons that are being transferred, it is the electrons. So that's the answer for part B. It is the electrons that are being transferred. Now the next question is for part C, how much electric charge was transferred and from where was it transferred? Initially, Q1 had a charge of positive 20. And then after some time T, it went down to 12. So it lost eight microcoulombs of charge. So its charge went down. Q2 initially had four microcoulombs of charge. Then it went up to 12. So it gained eight microcoulombs of charge. Not that it gained protons, it gained this positive charge through the loss of electrons. So electrons are negative and they like to flow towards positive charges. 
So the electrons will flow from sphere 2 to sphere 1. I said sphere 1. It's going to flow from sphere metal sphere 2 to metal sphere 1 because metal sphere 1 is more positive. It has a higher positive charge. Metal sphere 2 is less positive, which means it's more negative than metal sphere 1 in a relative sense. And electrons, they're attracted to positive charges, so they're going to go towards the metal sphere with the higher positive charge. And so it was transferred from metal sphere 2 to metal sphere 1. So we know from where it was transferred and where it went to, and we also know how much electric charge was transferred. That is 8 microclooms. Since we're dealing with electrons, they carry a negative charge, so the charge that was transferred is negative 8 microclooms as opposed to positive 8. The reason why this gained positive charge is because it lost electrons. This lost positive charge because it gained electrons. Now, how many electric particles were transferred? We know the electric charge that was transferred. We just got to convert that to the number of electrons. So first, let's convert microclooms to coulombs. One microclume, micro is 10 to negative 6, so that's 1 times 10 to minus 6 coulombs. And we know that one electron has a charge of negative 1.602 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. So the unit microcoulombs cancel, and the unit coulombs cancel, giving us the number of electrons. So we're going to multiply by the numbers on top, and divide by the number on the bottom. So it's negative 8 times 1 times 10 to negative 6 divided by negative 1.602 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. So this is equal to 4.99 times 10 to the 13 electrons. So that's how many electrons were transferred from metal sphere 2 to metal sphere 1. So hopefully this video gave you a good introduction into the concept of electric charge. By the way, this particular example problem, it illustrates something called the law of conservation of electric charge. That is that the total amount of electric charge in a closed system remains constant. So before the two metal spheres were brought into contact with each other, the total electric charge before the interaction was 20 plus 4, which is 24 microclooms. After contact, the total charge remains the same. 12 plus 12 is 24. So the total electric charge of this closed system, we don't have any outside forces acting on it, the total electric charge was conserved. It remained constant. It stayed 24 microclooms. So that's the basic idea behind the law of conservation of electric charge. The total amount of electric charge in a closed system remains constant.